Hi, I'm Joe, and this is the Decahedron RPG Podcast. Hi, James. Hi, Joseph. How are you this week? Nothing new, just the same old stuff, different day. And you? Oh, I am exhausted. I've just come off my 12 solid days of work and uh, other stuff. I'm just, I'm plum beat, but fortunately, this is a three-day weekend. So what are we talking about today, seeing you're keeping it so secret? This week, we are following up on a conversation that we had in email back in 2013. I don't remember yesterday's lunch. <laughs> How do you expect me to know an email for 2013? <laughs> so I figured it would be interesting to see how your views have changed and if they haven't. But in any case, it is a problem that I am facing right now. And I thought it would be interesting to get, to get your input on it. Actually, it's not so much a problem I have now because I've, I've kind of decided what I'm going to do. But I thought it would be a good topic. And uh, yeah, so here we are, 10 years later. We're going to talk about the flavor of space battles. Ah, uh, okay. I remember part of that. We were talking about either massive spaceship or dogfights like in past World War I and Two. Am I on the right track? You are on the right track. So, so let me give the intro. And it's interesting that you say World War II because that is the very first note I have is to say that pretty much all modern space opera is World War II in space. You look at Star Trek, you look at Star Wars, you look at Babylon 5, you look at any of it. It is all pretty much World War II in space. So I thought it would be interesting to frame it in World War II perspectives, quoting, you know, famous, referencing famous World War II-esque movies or TV shows or whatever. And so <laughs> the, f the first one, let's talk about Baba Black Sheep. One of my favorite. I I'm going to have to put that on DVD again. Jason had a contest over at the Nerds RPG Variety Cast last month where it was about your favorite military property. And I called, I left him a six minute uh, message uh, with my entry. But I purposely left out Baba Black Sheep because I figured you would call in and say that one because I know how much you like it. Uh, so, uh, Baba Black Sheep, maybe we could say the Battle Midway, 12 o'clock high. Yeah, one well, of those are bombers, but it works. We see this in science fiction and Star Wars and Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, those are the big ones. These are the ones where all the main characters are fighter pilots. They have their own fighter, you know. Luke has his X-Wing. Han goes off in the... Millennium Falcon. Yep, and Babylon 5, I mean, sorry, and Battlestar Galactica, it's pretty much about, you know, Apollo and Starbuck and, you know, going off in their... Uh, Vipers. Yep. And, uh, you know, pretty much the Galactica is just a big carrier and the Cylon... Uh, Spaceships are the same thing. Spaceships, yep, that are ba pretty much just ba big carriers. So, from a gaming perspective, I like this because each player gets their own fighter. And when it comes to space combat, it's easy to adjudicate. There you go. You're, you're in your fighter. Go fight. Um, the problem with this is that maybe every player does not want to be a fighter. fighter pilot. The other problem with this is when big, the big picture stuff, it's pretty much all handed to the player, right? Because they're, they're the fighter pilots on the oh, I was going to say on the carrier, but then it occurred to me that you know, Baba Black Sheep isn't on a carrier; it's on an, on, no, a, on, on a, an island, on an island, on a base on an island. And I was like, wow! Imagine instead of an island, it's an asteroid with space fighters. You could pretty much have the same thing, huh? Mm. Actually, there's and, a couple of movies out. Uh, there's a couple of shows that did that. Buck Rogers, the newest series, had something like that. Oh, I forgot all about Buck Rogers when I was uh, doing this. The the old '80s one that was, uh, yeah, that that was pretty much fighters too. Anyway, so uh, yeah, but the problem is, right? The the fighter pilots are not in command of the the carrier. 
And so from the big picture thing, you know, we're going to go over to this star system to investigate this. They, they're not really going to have that much say in that, right? That's going to happen with the commander. So I view that as a negative to that, as another negative. So give me your thoughts about the uh, fighter-based campaign. You like it? You don't like it? Tell me. I like it. There's a, a lot of issues with it, though. My first thing is, if someone gets blown out of the sky, individual fighter, yeah, you're losing that one player. You now have to re-roll that character. I just think the one small gunship, a B-25 as an example, is a better format. But you're right on the idea of they don't get to go where they want to. They get to go where they're told to go. So there is a trope in the fiction that I would emulate. And the trope is that every time you hit a Cylon, every time you hit a TIE fighter, they blow up. Boom. And every time that one of the main characters get hit, they go, I'm hit. And they don't blow up. Right. And I would carry that over. I would give their ship a <laughs> disabled state where all they can do is maybe fly back to the carrier or something. So one hit isn't going to kill them. The other movie I'm going to mention then is going to be PT-109. This is where you have your warship with its own crew. Uh, this is Star Trek. This is Firefly. And Firefly would be closer to PT-109 because it's a smaller ship. But usually in role-playing games, in like Traveler, that's going to be very PT-109. It's going to be, you know, a smaller vessel. This is ships fighting it out. And all the players are on the same ship. And the players are the crew of that ship. The benefit of this is, A, all the players are together. Uh, B, like the inverse of what we said for the other one, is that not everybody has to be a pilot. You can have a pilot. You can have the engineer. You can have the gunner. You can have the medic. You can have the scientist, right? If you're playing Star Trek, the role-playing game, you can have the botanist, right? Oh, yeah, I want to play a botanist. Um, <laughs> the problem I have is what do you do during a space combat with all those players that aren't involved, what do you do with the botanist in space combat? Is it okay to say, hey, for the next, you know, 15 minutes of game time, you might as well go grab a snack or, you know, catch up on your phone because you're not involved. You're just a botanist. All right. Your thoughts, sir. My idea is that the players need to have cross training where they are essential in those type of roles and maybe your botanist idea is like a secondary or third role for that character so you need to have a well-rounded character that can hop in where it's needed no you're not going to want three pilots uh in that crew but maybe two let me give you some of my real world experience here right we know that i used to be in the air force and, um, you know, like during my active duty years, I was a biomedical equipment technician, BMET, as we call them. And during exercises, very seldom did they say, you know, the anesthesia machine broke down. So we had our secondary position, which was facility security um, for the, the medical facility there. So you do the same thing in the game and you probably say that, OK, your botanist is part of damage control. Right. That's what you would do. But now you have to have rules that support damage control. You have to have rules that support all these various features. Right. So what does the pilot do during combat? OK, well, I guess that would be a defensive type role. Right. What does a gunner do? Well, that one's pretty obvious. They, they have a they they do a gunner. If you do the traveler slash Millennium Falcon thing, then every gun has its own gunner. And so, OK, that's kind of cool. The downside, of course, is that you need a gunner NPC for every gunner if you don't have enough on your crew, but whatever. Uh, so the engineer can do damage control stuff, and uh, the medic doesn't really have much to do unless you now have rules that if part of the ship gets hit, those people can get hurt 
then the medic has something to do. But maybe it's not bad that the medic doesn't have anything to do because there are times when medical stuff comes up that the other players don't have anything to do. Yeah, maybe. What does a navigator do during combat? Yeah, I got a navigator. <laughs> navigator really does nothing through combat other than maybe plane six o'clock high. Yeah, so that's that's the disadvantage I see there. It's it's yeah. But yeah, Traveler is this this model of, of game. And the last one I'm gonna say, this was my thought of maybe the, the happy medium. And I call it Science Ninja Team Gachiman. <laughs> Try that in English now? Uh, that is the English version. Science Ninja Gachiman. Well, actually, I guess that's, that's the, the Japanese title, uh, if you were to translate it into English. In English, it was called Battle of the Planets, or it was called G-Force, oh. depending you know which translation you were watching at the time. And I vaguely remember watching this as a kid. And anyway, in Space Ninja Team Gachiman, or Battle of the Planets, they had the, the one ship that, spoiler, every single episode ends with them going, Activate Fiery Phoenix! And then that suddenly wins the day when I just don't know why they don't, don't start with that. As a kid, I remember saying, just start with Fiery Phoenix, and we can make <laughs> the show shorter. But anyway, the, the whole concept there was that it was one ship, but various point parts would like shoot out. and. They each had their own, although in that one, like one of them was a motorcycle and another one was a thing. I don't know. It's been a lot of years. But so the thought would be like every team member has a fighter, but they come together and they join one bigger ship. They join together very uh, mecha way, very Japanese anime mecha fashion. And when they're joined together, that's when they can like make interstellar jumps and that's when they all the players can meet and you know have their downtime. But when um, combat s- starts, it all breaks up and they go off and act as fighters. Give me your thoughts on that. I actually have a, another thought on it, and it's coming from a Star Wars book. Have one small base ship that all the ships attach to, like you're saying, instead of. I've never liked the Mech Warrior. Let's combine five whatever is to create Gant, uh, what is it, Gantor or something like that? I don't know. I've never watched it. I've never seen it because, as you're saying, I am not a fan of Mecha. Um, I am a fan. There's a, there's a game called Big Eye, Small Mouth. Uh, probably talked about it before. I really like the game. It's an anime game. But there is one of the supplements for the first version was called Cool Robots, Big Mecha. Big Mecha, Cool Robots, something like that. But uh, yeah, that's that's never been my thing. And like I said, the Fiery Phoenix thing always irritated me. But as a gaming conceit, the ships coming together to form one bigger ship, which is exactly the same as saying that you have a, a drone bay ship. Same, same. It's just different that's, words. Yeah, I would be but, going with the drone. I'd be going with the it, bay it's, ship. At, oh, it's same, oh, same. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but what's your thoughts? How do you think that would game? Would you be interested in gaming in a situation like that? I would. Um, you would, ooh, I'm going to say it this way. You either need to have several NPCs or you're going to need a larger group. Um, cause if you're doing that, you need a wing of fighters. You can't just have two or three fighters. Why not? Too few. Why? Of the GM just scales the adventures accordingly, and the players don't take on things they can't handle. Okay, I was just thinking, like, the Bop Bop Black Sheep Squadron. It, I forget the exact numbers. At that point, you're going back to that whole model. You're going back to the carrier model. Right. For this one, I'm talking the very small group. They are everyone, and they just they, they come together for, like, like I said, purpose of interstellar travel. Um, you know, to sit around the mess table and play poker. It's their discussion spots. I like the concept. Um, I'd go for that. And so is that everything on this discussion? Or you have any other questions or any other comments? Those were the three. I, I mean, when I originally, when we originally talked about this 10 years ago, I had, I didn't talk about Space Ninja Team Gachaman. Um, and then talk about G-Force, but I did have another one 
which was, oh, the the hunt for Red October or Run Silent, Run Deep. Mm. Um, it's pretty, but it, the reason I have to off this time, it's pretty much the same thing as the PT-109. The only difference is instead of concentrating on shooting and being shot, emphasis is on detection and avoidance. But beyond that, it's it's pretty much the same exact thing. So I didn't feel it needed to be talked about separately. Okay, so is that the end of it for today? No, actually, one more question. So of those three models, of the, you know, everyone has their own fighter, all the crew is together in one ship, or the hybrid where everyone has their own fighter that comes together to form the ship, which one, which one would you like the best? If I was going to say, hey, James, I'm going to start. I'm going to start a campaign tomorrow. Which which one of these do you want to play? Which one would you pick? Actually, break them water. Which which one would you like the best? Which one would you would you like the least? I'm going to start off with individual fighters with a small carrier ship. Then, as you that's the one you like the bit best or the least? The most. Okay. Then I'd go with the one ship like a Defiant or PT. All right. So the standard traveler model, pretty much. Yep. Yep. And then the last, where it is someone else commanding the carrier, and we're just a wing on the carrier. So the the Star Wars big ship or the Battlestar Galactica model. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. There's there's no right or wrong answer. I'm not going to agree or disagree. You know that's how you feel. Okay. Let's um, hear your order. Well, see, it's different from a GM, right? Because I look at it from different things. It's like, it depends on the kind of storytelling I want the game to be. If I want it to be a sandbox, the whole carrier thing does not work, right? Because the players don't have enough say. And the whole concept behind the sandbox is that the players are going out and exploring and doing that. So unless you say that, the carrier commander also straps in his fighter to launch, or he's not involved in space battles. I, you know, as a player, that one's not going to work. Um, on the other hand, if you have a very directed story that you want to tell, you know, hear your orders from Starfleet Command, that model works. But on the other hand, you're going to do that. The PT 109 type model works. And it works for sandboxes. That's why it's used in Traveler, right? Because you give the players a ship, go where you want, discover what you will. Um, the science team ninja, uh, the science ninja team Gachiman, uh, the Battle of the Planets thing. Um, I've never tried it. I think it might, could work. But pretty much you're just saying that's PT-109 where everyone has an own fighter and you kind of ignore the carrier when the fighters are out. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, that's my thoughts on the three. So one more thing before we wrap up, James. Hey, everyone. You're hearing these a little out of the order that we recorded them in. But this was the first one where James's connection problem showed up. And right here, he lost his connection and couldn't get back on. Fortunately, we were done talking anyway. The only other thing we were going to mention was the July giveaway for the month of July. So between now and July 31st. Send us feedback with your favorite hard science fiction property. It could be a book, a movie, graphic novel, comic strip. I don't care. Anything. And let us know uh, what you like about it. And if you think it would be good in the game and how you would do it as a gaming scenario. Other than that, we're really done. Please send us feedback. Let me know how you would handle a space opera campaign. Like, do you like the idea of everyone being in their own little fighter? But then how do you deal with the, the players not having the, the ability to make those big decisions? Do you like it being all on one ship? But then what do you do with those players that don't have those combat roles during a space battle? Let me know. That's not just a, you know, send me feedback thing. I've been struggling with this. As you heard, you know, I sent James that email 10 years ago. I still haven't found the perfect answer. So. If you want to leave feedback on that or anything else, feedback at degahedron.com. You can call the feedback line. You can go to sayhi.chat slash degahedron, or you can go to the discussion boards at www.degahedron.com slash boards. All that information is in the outro music. It's in the show notes. Actually, you know what? The boards aren't in the outro music yet, but you know what I mean. Anyway, thanks for listening. And until next week, happy gaming, happy life. Bye. 
We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Decahedron RPG Cast. We'd love to hear from you. You can leave us a voice message by calling 562-774-2278. That's 562-RPG-CAST. Or by visiting sayhi.chat slash decahedron. You can also email us at feedback at decahedron.com. Links are in the show notes. For more information, visit decahedron.com. Remember that Decahedron is spelled with a K. Music is by Kevin McLeod. Logo is by Design Cat. Thanks again for listening, and until next time, keep those dice rolling.